you will, turn with me with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to be talking about five pillars of God's grace. Okay? We all know what grace is. We understand it, but there's some things that maybe we're not aware of. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, so rich is He in His mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great, wonderful, and intense love with which He loved us. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive together in fellowship and union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ Himself, the same new life with which He quickened Him for, for it is by His grace, His favor and mercy, which you did not deserve that you were saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. He raised us up together with Him and made us to sit down together, giving us joint seating with Him in the heavenly spheres. You know, so often we don't know all that God has for us, but part of the problem is, is that we don't put ourselves in a position where we can draw what He has into us. God wants you and I to, to quit making our love for Him conditional, Make it unconditional as His love is for us and receive all that He has for us. He tells me it's time for you and I to quit. Just cut it out, receiving the, symbol, the, the uh, labels that the world has put on you. You know, the label where your teacher said you were a failure. Your boss said you were stupid. Your parents said you don't know how to learn. Right. You know, we've got all of these labels that, that are not positive that people have put upon us. And then we have those things that we define ourselves by personally. Where can I go for vacation? Uh, if I can go to Hawaii, I have arrived. You know, or, or maybe it has to do with what you've accomplished. You know, in the military, can I accomplish the rank of general officer? Full colonel, colonel, sergeant major, whatever it is. Sometimes we define ourselves by those things. We define ourselves by things that are not necessarily things that God wants us defined by. He wants to define you, and His defined definition is love. And we need to start ignoring the labels of the world. You know, you just need to cut it out. You know, I used to think that kids were vicious. Hey, adults are just as vicious. All right, good news for you. But we don't have to partake of it. You see, God tells us who we are. God asks us to listen to Him and not to the world. You know, we, sometimes we need to cut off the television. Sometimes we need to cut off the radio. Yeah, maybe Christian music, but maybe you need to cut it off anyway so you can hear Him. And learn who He is. See, God wants to tell you who He is, but He wants to tell you who He is as, he, as is defined by His grace, active in our lives, showing us the power that we can show others. You know, it's, that's what God wants to do. And Paul here is trying to tell us that, you know, there, there's a couple of principles here that you might want to look at. The first one, or I called it a pillar, is that we're spiritually alive. How many of you have ever, don't, don't raise your hands, please, have, have ever said, I can't hear God. Where are you, God? You're spiritually alive. Quit speaking death. If I'm alive, I can hear. Well, if, you know what? I, this is just Gene. When I get to that point when I don't feel like I can hear God, when I'm just sitting here praying and listening to him, I pick up the Bible and read it because the Bible will show me who he is and will bring me back in line, okay? You're spiritually alive. We were dead to our sin. We were dead in sin, and now we've been brought to new life. Do you know what a new life is? This little baby over here is new life. That little baby has, these little babies over here have no idea of what's before them. Okay, but they can rejoice and look forward to it. 
because we can make sure that their life, their life is good. Do you know that your new life in Christ, you don't necessarily know what the next step is, but you do know what the promises are, but we have to keep moving. We have to keep going. We have to keep working and looking for it. You see, God's grace in Ephesians 2, 4, it said, God is so rich in mercy. Why would he say so rich in mercy if it wasn't rich? Okay, it's more than you need. And he loved us so much that even while we were dead, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's special favor that you've been saved. That means there's nothing you can do to earn it. Okay? Some of us as Christians, we've been Christians a long time. We're still trying to earn God's favor. Yellow. Cut it out. You know how I know you're, looking, you, you're still looking for His favor? If you, you're still looking at your past. You're spending more time dwelling on what you mistake, your mistakes you made yesterday. I know you've all heard this. You know why the rear view mirror is this size and the front window is this big? Quit looking at the past and the failures. Start looking forward to what God has for you. For all He has for you is good and it's honorable. And that's what will draw others to Him. In Romans 6, 4, it says, Therefore you were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If I'm going to walk in something new, I'd sure better put us away the old. All right? You know, when I lose weight, I want new clothes. I want to put away the old. I don't want to remember the old. All right? But then you have some times where, like uh, just recently, I, uh, my wife said, what did you do with all your, your small clothing when you put on weight? And I said, I got rid of them. I didn't want to remember them. <laughs> the problem was I went in the hospital and I lost weight. <laughs> well, never mind. That's another story. I, we need to share this new life. Put away the things of yesterday. You made a mistake. Get over it. Hello. Now let me define get over it. That's one of my favorite statements. You know, get over it means put it under your feet so that you're on top of it. All right? That's what I mean when I say get over something. You've got a problem? Get over it. Put it under your feet because Christ has already put our failures under His. And let's go on. Because God wants that for us. He doesn't want a church that is halfway sold out. He wants a church that is totally and completely sold out. That walks in newness of life. That displays His love wherever we go. That's right. Even at work. That's right. Even at play. That's right. Even at the lake. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you've been doing. We need to be showing God's love. Hey, I found out something. You know that even, even when I didn't feel good, even when I had to take some painkillers, you know what? I was still able to minister to some of those nurses and orderlies that came around. Even at the hospital. Hey, I haven't been sitting back not doing anything. I went back to visit them after my wife said, Wow, they, they really appreciated you. I said, Yeah, I tried to treat them like they should be treated and show them God's love, you know? People want to be around you. People don't want to be around an old sour puss. You all know what that is, don't you? Okay, just checking. I didn't know if that was something from where I was from. They, he want, they want to be around somebody that's got life. Not just life, life more abundantly. In Romans, 9, uh, Romans 6, 11, 13. So you should consider yourself dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Christ Jesus. Give yourself completely to God since you've been given this new life. Give yourself completely to Him. Just like we're supposed to give ourselves completely to each other in marriage. Do it completely because you have that new life. So you and I are spiritually alive. We've got to quit walking around. Oh, no, Pastor. You know, yesterday things didn't go well for me. You know, I'm not sure there's any life left in me. You have Christ in you? 
There's life in you. And it won't go away either. The second pillar. We're heavenly positioned. This is in the way now. I told him I had to have that. We're no longer slaves to sin. We're heavenly positioned. We're made right in God's sight. We're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Where's Christ seated right now? In heaven. Where? The right hand of God. If I'm seated beside Him, I'm not going to be seated between Him and God, right? But I'm going to be on His other side. That means there's only one between me and God. Hello. That's where you're seated right now. That's how close you are in your relationship to God through Christ. Can you see yourself there? You're not at the back of the room in the darkness trying to hide, afraid God will see you and call you out. You're seated right beside Him. And He sees Christ in you. He loves us, folks. He loves us. And He wants us to love Him. Ephesians 2, 6 says, For He raised us from the dead, and we're seated with Him. In Romans 5, 19, it says, Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one person obeyed God, many people will be made right in God's sight. It's time for us to quit claiming what Adam and Eve did for us. Well, if it hadn't been for them, I wouldn't be a sinner. It's all their fault. Hey, how about this? Christ died for you and took away your sins. Quit dwelling on the past. All right? Quit, and by the way, quit doing it. You got something? Yeah, just, cut, just cut it out. Okay? That's what God wants for us. Colossians 3.3 3 says, For you died and your life is hidden in Christ in God. When Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. woo I like that. You see, I died. And my life is now hidden in Him. It's hidden in Him. That's why we can say when, when God looks at us on Judgment Day, God is not going to see me. And he is not going to see my sin. He is going to see Christ and his blood that washed me clean. He did not cover me or cover my sins. He washed me clean. The best example of that that I can do is this. This piece of paper represents my sin. If it is covered by now it's covered. What happens? Have I, is the sin still there? Sin's still right there. That's why the Jews every year had to have offerings for their sin. Because they were covered. They were never taken away. Hello. Now rejoice because yours have been taken away. They're not there. Get excited and let God know of your love for Him. Pillar three. You're connected to God. I don't feel it. Well, get over your feelings. All right? How many of you know your feelings lie to you? Okay, most of us. For those of you that don't, take my word for it. Your feelings are lying to you. Well, I don't feel right. Well, you probably don't feel right. But they're lying to you because Christ didn't leave you in that condition. Hello? You're connected. We're not alone anymore. We've been made one with Christ. One. How many times can you divide one? You can't. Oh, you can say I can get halves. Christ only works in holes, a whole person. All right? He abides in us and we abide in Him. He abides in us. We abide in Him. He's part of us. We're part of Him. Hello. Can you see yourself a part of Christ? Well, I don't know, Pastor. You know, I, 
I got these problems I'm still working on. Well, Jesus has said they're already taken care of. Why are you still working on them? <laughs> Think about it. I mean, he, he jerked me up by the stacking swivel while I was in bed. You know? It's time for us to, to understand that when you're with Christ and he's with you, you don't have to stay where you are. Okay? John 17, 25 and 26 says, O righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and the di disciples know you sent me, and I have revealed them to you to them, and will keep on revealing you. I will do this so that your love for me may be in them, and I in them. He's going to still be working in you. Yellow, let him work in you. I don't want that changed in me. Well, you ought to. Well, how do you know that? Because I know God, I've still got lots of stuff. I need to let him work in me. All right? Hebrews 3.14 says, For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. What does Satan want to do? Comes to kill and destroy. All right? He, he wants to take away what you have. How many of you know he cannot do it? Well, if he cannot do it, why do we keep giving in to him? He has no power over you unless you give it to him. That's why our emotions are so fickled. <laughs> okay? We need to become partakers with Christ. Confident in everything he said. The Bible said it. That's it. End of discussion. Well, I don't know about that, Gene. Now, you know, some of those things don't seem to apply. They apply. Okay? Just hang on. He'll show, he'll show it to you. Okay? Well, but I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. You can do it if God said so. You know, we, we, we keep giving ourselves a way out. All right? And then we blame Satan. Satan didn't do anything. We just decided we wanted it. We've got to want Christ more than we want what Satan has for us. Because if you, we keep wanting what he has for us, then we're going to be destroyed. Because that's what he wants to do. The fourth pillar. You are a billboard of mercy. How many of you can see yourself as a billboard? Huh? How many of you know that people watch you? How many of you know that they, they'll know if you make a mistake or not? I remember right after, I was just beginning to, to, to flow with the Lord and uh, working towards becoming a pastor. And I retired from the military, was working for a contractor, made a strong stand for Christ in that office. And wouldn't you know it, something would come up and my old flesh would rise up and spew something out I wish I'd have never remembered. I know y'all have never done that. And so I would, but I discovered very quickly, I went to those folks and said, please forgive me because that was not very Christ-like. And they made fun of me at first. But it wasn't long before when they had troubles, they wanted to come to me to pray for them. Stand up for what Christ has for you, wherever you may be. You see, God's mercy is demonstrated. He made us an example. He made an, us an example of His incredible wealth of, and favor and kindness. And that's what we should be showing other people. Well, you know what that person did to me? I, it doesn't matter. Show them kindness. Whatever they did is, is temporary. It won't last. Show them kindness. That's what Christ does to us. Hello. Whatever we do, <laughs> it's not uplifting. Titus 3.5 says, He saved us not because of the good things we did, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins and He gave us a new life through the Holy Spirit. You were given a new life. Hello. 
So therefore, in Hebrews 4.16, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, for there we will receive His mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it. Come boldly up to the Father. Please, God. Hey, Daddy, this is what I need from you. As children, isn't that what we did? <laughs> we didn't back off of telling them what we needed. You can come boldly before the throne. Why? Because you became a new creation in Christ. And who does God see? He doesn't see you. He sees Christ. Number five. Now here's probably one that we have a great deal of difficulty with, but we need to understand that you are now an honored child. You're not just a child of God. You're honored by God for who you are in Christ. You see, God saved us by His special favor. He made us His own children, and we're heirs to all that He has promised us through faith. We're heirs. You know? Now, you know, if we're heirs, that means we're going to get the same thing that Jesus gets. That's the, that's the promise God has for you. Well, I'm not sure I'm ready. Or I'm not sure I'm there yet. Yes, you are if you know Jesus. You see, we keep trying to put all of these other stipulations, and unfortunately, we as churches sometimes do the same thing. Well, if you'll just get this straight in your life, you'll be okay. No, getting that straight won't make you okay. But if you'll get your life straight with the Lord, then you will be okay. It's that simple, and it's that hard. But God gives us the strength to be overcomers and not surcomers, not giving in at every whim of the world. Romans eight sixteen and 17 says, For His Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts, and tells us that we're God's children. Spirit speaking to you right now and letting you know that you're one of God's children. And since we are His children, we will share His treasures. For everything God gives to His Son Christ is ours too. That's for those that didn't think what I just said was <laughs> scriptural. God's going to give it to you. You're an heir. You're not a step child. You're an heir. You're part of the family. You're not an outcast. Galatians 3.26 says, you are all children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. All of us. Oh, by the way, there's no pecking order. Nobody in here is ahead of the other. We're all his children, period. Ephesians 5.1 says, Follow God's example in everything you do because you are His dear children. You see, we should love God as our Heavenly Father so much that we only want to do the same things that Jesus did, which was do the same things that He saw His Father do. Okay? And in Titus 3.7, it says, Having been justified by His grace... We should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Ladies, you know, we, he has given us these five things that we need to get a hold of. You see, you are spiritually alive. You are not stupid, unproductive, slow learner, fast talker, quitter, cheapskate, or keep on going, whatever you think, seem to think you need to, to, to share. All right? But when God's grace infiltrates us, we are free of all of those things. And we know that not only are we spiritually alive, but we are heavenly positioned, connected to the Father, a billboard of mercy and an honored child of God. Can I have an amen? amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Well, 
<coughs> I finished. I hope the spirit is. <laughs> All right. Uh, you have a, an announcement to make. Huh? Oh. Next Sunday, after the morning service, which you've heard about now, Terry. Terry. Um, um. Put that girl over there. <laughs> So daddy, daddy doesn't get recognized, it's just well, mommy and the baby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Anyway, we're going to have a lunch in the shower. you like y'all have done? There'll be, there'll, there'll be a forgiveness line around the corner afterwards. <laughs> okay, let's all rise. And before you leave today, look around and see if the Lord's telling you you need to pray with somebody before you go. Okay? So, Heavenly Father, as we go from this place, let us go demonstrating to the world the glory that is within us because of the love you have for us. And help us, Lord, to be that example for others. In Jesus' name, amen.